All right guys, welcome back to JDP Auto Engineering. Um, today we're doing some work on this lovely uh, 2014, 2015 Volkswagen Amarok. Um, it's absolute rig. Um, it's, it's me and my partners touring um, and camping uh, companion. So um, we've got today uh, under Ute tank from under Ute tanks, um, guy in Swan Hill in Victoria who um, makes tanks for different makes and models. Um, it's pretty hard to find stuff for Amarox most of the time so it's good good to know some of this stuff's on, out on the market. Um, comes with all the bracketry and hoses and fittings um, and yeah it goes up under the spare wheel. Um, it's where the AdBlue tank sits on the V6 AdBlue models. You can see that we've already taken the very clean spare wheel out, um, just using the spare wheel remover tool in the car. So yeah, we'll um, get this unpacked and start installing it. All right, so we have the tank and all the hardware unpackaged now. So tank, nice light plastic tank, breather on top, um, nut so it's built into the tank for mounting. You can see this is where the spare wheel will end up sitting. Um, and then the outlet slash inlet on the very bottom there. Um, here's all the hardware and fittings that came with it. So you've got nice, um, looks to be laser cut um, gal plates, some hoses, uh, tap fittings, um, different fittings to uh, put the water into the tank because I believe it gets filled through the same same spot as it, it gets emptied um, and all the hardware there. So we'll uh, sit and read the instructions for a minute and figure out how this goes in. So um, see these these two square holes. Um, grab the plate, the small plate with bolts in it, acts like a big washer, and then these pass through here. All right, so we've got the big washer brackety dudes up with the long bolts through both sides. Um, I'm gonna do this a bit against the instructions. The instructions say hold the tank up and then put these brackets in, because we have all of these cables here that run our 12 volts at the back uh, and a culmination of other things. I'm going to actually put this bracket in first. Slide it there. Then on. Through there. Safety glasses are a joy working on dirty cars. Because someone likes driving through mud. Um, washers and then I'm just going to loosely put on the lock nuts that are provided. So that bracket stays in place. So that's on there loosely. We're then going to grab the tank, flip it around. The uh, curved part goes on the bottom, and then put it up passenger side first slides up on top of that bracket we just put on and then sets up like that so the instructions do note at this point uh, it's easier with two people but my lovely assistant is recording so we're just gonna try and hold the tank up I think <laughs> maybe yeah there we go and then front exhaust side slide of this puppy up here. Just be careful of the wheel speed sensor cable. Oh, my leg is cramping. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and then top washer. Remember washers are directional. That is a debate, but I believe they are. There's a rounded side. The rounded side faces the nut. The flat side faces the surface that you're screwing to. You can fight me about that one. And then the other one. And the nut. Thank you, Amelia. 
Cool, so that's loosely done up there. And next we're gonna come back and bolt it up to the tank and tighten everything up. All right, so we're just gonna bolt the tank up now. You can see the nice elongated holes to make it nice and adjustable. Just using the shorter bolts that are provided with the smaller washers. Washers facing the correct way, of course. Can't do those two. So just loosely doing everything up. And then we'll come back in a minute. I'll do the other side. And then we'll come back in a minute and snug everything up. As well as we just got to put the hose fittings on. So we'll get to that. So... I've got a 70mm spanner and a 70mm ratcheting spanner. Could use, obviously, a socket. But we'll first start by doing the big bolts up that go through the chassis rails. And if I know which ways do up and which ways undo, that helps greatly. So we'll snug these four up um, while leaving the ones in the tank loose um, and we'll get back to you once these four are done up. So we now have the four big bolts done up on each side. The little ones, you can see, got the movement there. We'll get them in place and then just nip them up with a 13mm socket. Uh, just because they are into plastic, just be a bit gentle and don't over tighten them because you don't want to strip the thread and spin it around in there. Uh, yeah. We now have the outlet that's going to get um, screwed up into the bottom of the tank. You can see that uh, under ute tanks have already provided uh, Teflon tape on the, all the fittings, which is great to try and minimize leaks. So I'll put this barb fitting onto the right angle and snug it up. Something like that. We will then pop it in underneath. So this is our outlet slash inlet. Start screwing that up there. And they note in the instructions, I don't think that the thread will bottom out, they note in the instructions just put it in the direction that will face where you want to run the outlet. So I reckon we'll get the spare wheel back up into place, then we'll push our hose on, cut it to length, and figure out where we want the outlet. And up she goes. Back into its home. You can see there. Um, I've seen on Facebook that some guys say you can run up to like 32s, 33s um, with this kit, uh, this, this tank kit. As you can see with stock wheel size, wheel and tire size. So these are 16, uh, 1670s. Um, plenty, plenty of room up there, which is really nice. So because I'm weak, um, we've got the hose here that's provided. So this little bit goes between the outlet which has the filler and the ball valve. We've got a cup of boiling water because I don't have big manly muscles unfortunately. Uh, so we're just going to warm the hose up so it becomes nice and soft. I'll probably burn my fingers in the process. Then it should make it easier to not slide on because... Oh no, there we go. Should probably do this with clean hands too to not get dirt in your nice new water fittings. Heat this end up. And push it on. Like so. And now we're gonna do the same thing for the fitting underneath the car. So I'm just heating up the hose. Getting it nice and warm. Spare wheel went up there nicely as you saw. Quite quite happy with the fitment of the tank so far. 
Alrighty, let's bang this on. Slide straight on, thanks for that bit of warmth. And now we're just planning, we think we're gonna run the hose above our TJM rear bar here. Cable tie it around here. And say it still clears a spare wheel. And then we're gonna cut it a bit shorter, uh, put that end fitting on, and then cable tie it all up. Now the hose is ran, popped a cable tie on the barb back there, just in case, and it runs to there. And we're gonna fill it up and have a go. So we have the hose on, turn the valve on, and we'll turn the hose on. And water's going in. You can hear it fill up. Just put a little bit in there. That'll do. Turn the valve off. Take that off. And then, do you want to do the honours, Amelia? Hey, I can wash my hands. How good's that? And then, cap off the end. We got it so you can just twist it up so then the valve tucks up in behind the bar. So, that is our install of um, an under utes tank on a Volkswagen Amarok. Um, all in all, very happy with the fit up. Um, good price. Um, yeah, all quality components. Really nicely tucked up in there. So, please make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Um, and keep an eye out for any more JDP auto engineering content. We have a whole diverse range of, of stuff we do. Stuff from 4x4s to other Volkswagen goodness, um, as well as some old 80s Fords and other Falcons and Commodores and all fun Australian stuff, um, as well as a bit of European. So thanks for watching and tune in next time.